Hello, good evening, and welcome. This is Science Fiction Snob. Today we're going to talk about Philip Jose Farmer's Dayworld. So, Dayworld is uh, set in a dystopian future. The world is overpopulated, and they have um, basically uh, cut the world's population down by seven by allocating people to live one day a week. So, you know, seven families live in a house. Uh, you live in that house for one day of the week, and you're, you actually are called, like, I'm a Tuesday guy. So you're every Tuesday. So the the way they do this is they, quote, stone people. And it's like a, a sen uh, suspended animation. They put them in where they're sort of turned to stone, and they're actually, you know, hard. You know, you could poke them with a stick or a knife or something, and it wouldn't go through, which is kind of interesting because then you can you could use that you know you could stone things in order to you know make them very tough and you could build with that kind of stuff so the novel focuses on uh you know the main character uh he's a daybreaker so he's one who lives more than one day a week which is of course illegal um interesting thing about him is that uh when he daybreaks uh, this is uh, he actually um assumes different personalities when he uh, day breaks and uh, he doesn't live in the same um, you know he doesn't uh, happen to have of course that would be too easy he doesn't happen to daybreak and you know he's in the same uh, the same house and he has to, he can you know li keep living in that house that'd be too easy so he has to so he's actually you know he goes in they go into their little cubicle stone or cubicles he's supposed to stone himself but he doesn't he jumps out and he'll get out of his house and like run across the the uh you know the the neighborhood to wherever else he has to go at a time when you know there's nobody on the streets because no they're all supposed to be you know getting ready to be stoned and or being stoned and then the next group wakes up uh, so he's running across you know houses and stuff trying to get to his new place so he can you know show up so uh that's kind of an interesting little aspect of it so uh he works um he is in uh works for a, a government a group that is, you know, defying the government. Uh, they're called Immers, and uh, they work. They're, you know, infiltrated in government all over, and they're trying to change uh, the system. So um, that's the basis of the story. Uh, so there's three books: Dayworld, first book; Dayworld Rebel, and then um, the last book is called uh, Dayworld Breakup. And I don't know where my copy is. I think. I probably lent it to somebody and that somebody didn't give it back. Don't you hate when that happens? People think that your books are like, you know, if you give them a, a soft cup, uh, cover book, it's like, you know, a comic book that you're giving it away. No, I, I want my collection. I want my books back into my collection. It's not a freebie. Anyway, sorry about that little rant. Um, yeah, so, uh, so the story is, um, you know, I find there's similarities between a lot of authors and the kind of stories they write. So, you know, uh, this uh, series by Farmer has some aspects that are similar to uh, you know other stuff he writes. You know, there's the whole conspiracy aspect. You know, the main characters in a conspiracy. They're rebelling against, uh, you know, a, a powerful group or a government. You know, similar to his, uh, you know, his uh, Tarzan and... Uh, Doc Caliban uh, series, you know, um, it's a dystopia, which is kind of unusual for, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, it's kind of unusual for Farmer. I don't think that I would classify Riverworld as a dystopia. Um, you know, it's more of a, it's a utopia that, you know, the, um, the characters rebel against. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's a dystopia. Uh, you know, is World of Tears a dystopia? Uh, you know, I don't think it falls under that, those categories per se. Um, so this is a little, uh, things that he's added to this one that's a little un different than others is the whole, you know, the idea of m multiple personalities. And that, uh, that aspect, um, is, uh, is involved deeply in the story. Um, you know, uh, you know, the... He goes. Uh, the main character goes crazy, uh, and the uh, this group of the Immers uses that, you know, against him, uh, and they, you know, 
lock him up and to try to get rid of him. And of course, he doesn't want to be gotten rid of. So uh, the story revolves around that. So he actually he's rebelling against the uh, Immers who are rebelling against the government um, as well. So uh, you know this is uh, of the uh, series that Farmer uh, Farmer uh, has written. This is my least favorite one, and that's not to say that it's not good. Uh, it's just you know the the River World you know is is basically my favorite and you know even the world of tears is just quite beyond what uh, any other writers uh, think about farmer is just so imaginative imaginative that this is uh, not as imaginative as uh, his other stuff now that's not to say it's not um, you know it's not imaginative you know this is an interesting idea everyone living only one day um, a week and how you know the government could use that to um, to control people but uh, you know and if this was a series written by any other writer you know you would say hey what a great concept what a great idea it's only um, you know not as good because it's farmer and he is so imaginative with his, uh, his series like river world and world of tears so out there so but uh, it's still good and it's three books so it's easier to get into and read the whole series than uh, some of the other longer stuff like River World or uh, World of Tears. You can see, you know, this is basically, you know, it's a standard, you know, standard paperback novel size. Uh, you know, nothing, nothing too long would it wouldn't take you too long to read it. So I still recommend it. Uh, it's a good series. You know, I still like River World and World of Tears. Uh, more there I mean they're just so good but uh, you know if you're interested in farmers stuff you want to get into something that's a little perhaps not as far off the wall more uh, mainstream uh, science fiction uh, less imaginative than day world and day world rebel rebel um, and uh, would be a great place to start for sure so this uh, wraps up my discussion of uh, Farmer. There are more books that he's done, and I may review them in the uh, in the future. But my plan is to, you know, focus on. Well, first I'm focusing on the uh, the older uh, science fiction writers because I think there's probably a lot of younger sci-fi readers that haven't you know haven't heard of some of these older. Uh, authors and you know I haven't read them so I'm trying to bring those ones to the fore first so if you notice that everyone I've done so far uh, of all the writers have been dead so we're gonna get through the the dead writers first and then we're gonna go to more uh, the ones that are more uh, that are alive and still writing things so uh, this this is it for farmer I may add some of his other stuff later we'll see how it goes but I just wanted to get you know, as fast as possible, people interested in, um, you know, some of these uh, older writers that they may not know of because they're not writing anymore. They're not putting out new things. It's not coming out all the time. So next we're going to do, uh, I think I'm going to do um, Herbert, uh, the Dune series, and talk about them, you know, very quickly. I'm going to have to, I'm going to do all the, I'm going to break up the Dune series into smaller groups, you know, the, the original series and plus some of the other th ones that, uh, his son has been um, adding to Dune. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of times when a writer takes over from uh, another writer, it's not as good. But I actually think the non-Frank Herbert Dune series are, are pretty good. I mean, they're not as good as the originals, but they're based on uh, Herbert's extensive notes. So uh, it's you're kind of getting, you know, his stuff, perhaps not in the exact same style or the way he would have written it, but you know, close enough to make it uh, feel like a Dune book. But uh, I think that's what we'll do next. We'll go on to uh, Frank Herbert, and we'll talk about Dune, and that should be. And I'm getting close to the end of the dead good science fiction writers, and I'll have to start going on to the live ones after that. So I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, make comments, uh, subscribe. I would appreciate that. Uh, tell your friends if they're looking for uh, good science fiction. And uh, we'll see you next time.